Now, the exponential relationships we've been looking at have showed up as equations in two variables. One of the things that we like to do with equations in two variables is to graph them. What would the graph of an exponential equation look like? Suppose we want to graph this equation, y equals 3 times 2 to the x. Let's just come up with some pairs that are solutions. Let's just make a table. Let's say we want where x is negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2. So we'll have 3 times 2 to the negative 2, 3 times 2 to the negative 1, 3 times 2 to the 0, 3 times 2 to the 1, 3 times 2 to the 2. I'm just going to do this on my calculator. We'll have 3 times 2 to the negative 2. Um, it's going to be easier to graph as a fraction. 3 fourths, 3 times 2 to the negative 1. 1. 1.5, that's 1 and a half. 3 times 2 to the 0 I can do in my head. 2 to the 0 is 1, so this is going to be 3. 2 to the 1 is 2, this is going to be 6. 3 times 2 squared is 12. Oh yeah, 2 squared is 4. Huh. So it looks like I need my y-axis to go up at least to 12. But I'm not going to have any negative numbers showing up. Are negative numbers ever going to show up? Well, no. 2 to the x is positive and more than 1, if x is a positive number. Still positive, but a fraction less than 1, if x is negative. It's just 1 if x is 0. So 2 to the x is never 0 and never negative. Multiplying by 3 isn't going to make something 0 or negative. So in our example here, y is never zero and never negative. But it needs to go up to 12. So my y-axis might look something like this. Then my x-axis needs to go over to negative 2 and over to positive 2. I'm going to, just so it isn't too squished, use two spaces for each unit. Um, so when x is negative 2, y is 3 fourths, that's going to be about here. When x is negative 1, y is 1 and a half, that's about here. When x is 0, y is 3. When x is 1, y is 6. When x is 2, y is 12. Looking at this picture, it's easy to see that these points definitely do not lie on a straight line. And that makes sense. When we had linear relations, their graph was a line. Now that we have a relation that is not linear, its graph is not a line. The graph is a curve that looks something like this. Off to the left, what does it do? It keeps getting close to the x-axis, but it never gets there. y is never actually 0, and it never crosses. Over here, well, over here it just gets really big. As we repeatedly multiply by 2, we get bigger and bigger numbers showing up faster and faster. Let's take a look at this graph on the calculator just for comparison. I'm going to go into my y equals and say y equals 3 times 
2 to the power x. Um, first I'm going to set my window just like I have here, x going from negative 2 to 2, and then I'm going to use zoom fit. So here's a graph that looks quite a bit like this one. If I tell it I really want my y min to go down to zero, it'll look even more like this. Okay. What if I let my x's go out further? Let's say I wanted to go negative 5 to 5. Use zoom fit again, and then adjust so my y min really does go down to 0. Oops, there we go. We see that off to the left, Right, it really does look like our graph is squishing down into the x-axis. Why? Because it gets so close that a, a whole pixel doesn't fit in between. But it's not actually getting all the way down to the x-axis. It's just getting really, really close. Off to the right, my y's are getting really, really big. How big? Well, it looks like the biggest y on my screen is 96. If I decided to go from negative 10 to 10 instead, well, now it looks like it's just down in the x-axis for most of the length of the graph. Oh, the biggest y on my graph is 3,072. But that's pretty big. As I go off to the right, y gets really, really big. If I set my y's back to what I had on this graph, y only going up to 12, here we see the shape of the graph we're looking at here. Off to the left, it gets really, really close to the x-axis. And off to the right, the graph is off screen because it's so big. Okay, so. This is what the graph of this exponential relationship looks like. There's one big thing that can make a difference to us. Compare this to the graph of 3 times 0.7 to the x. Right, I'm just going to leave them both on screen for a moment. So here's the old graph. Here's the new graph. The big difference that we see is the old graph got big off to the right and small off to the left. The new graph gets big off to the left and small off to the right. What is it that makes the difference between them? In this first example, the multiplier was bigger than 1. In this second example, the multiplier was less than 1, but still positive. We're not going to write down exponentials with multipliers that are exactly 1, because that would be pretty boring. We just multiply by 1 over and over again, which doesn't do anything. We aren't going to write down exponentials with multiplier 0. Again, multiplying by 0 over and over again doesn't do anything interesting. And we're not going to write down exponentials with negative multipliers, because weird things happen. Notice that I filled in all the in-between points. This point represents something like x is 1 half, y is 3 times 2 to the 1 half. We only defined fractional exponents when the base was positive. So we're not going to concern ourselves with exponential relationships where the base is negative because most of the time that exponent just doesn't even make sense. If the multiplier is more than 1, we expect a graph that gets big off to the right. If the multiplier is less than 1, we expect a graph that gets big off to the left.